Well, we're here at the 18th Century Artisan Show in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, and this is part two of our show coverage, and today we're going to be looking at the contemporary makers in room one. So I hope you enjoyed the last week's edition, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy this. Well, John Getz of the Getz Rifle Barrel Company and Art DeCamp, who's seated here to the right, they are the co-founders of this show. And uh, it really does enliven up the winter, so I owe them a big hearty thanks. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the contemporary artisans doing 18th century crafts. And as always, the guns are front and center, but there are lots of other crafts here to see. So we'll try to show you a bit of everything. This is my friend John DeWald, Master Horner. And John, what are you working on now? Uh, I'm working on a, what we would consider a Rogers Rangers horn, an F&I horn, French and Indian horn. And uh, it starts with the name John Roberts. It's a fictitious character, actually. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a map horn. It shows the Hudson Valley. And it, it goes from uh, Fort Edward up to Lake Champlain. And it will cover the, the trail of the Rogers Rangers up to the Battle of the Snowshoes. Uh, what else makes it unique to Rogers Rangers is the double R, the Rogers Rangers cipher. Uh, this is the uh, King George II, Great Britain cipher. And then the medallion that goes on the back is King George II's personal seal. That is just beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, John. Yeah, no problem. So you can see why John is a master horner in the Honorable Company of Horners Guild. And uh, here are a few more examples of John's work before we move on. John is really an artist of the first rank. There's no doubt about that when you look at his work. And here's some excellent 18th century style pottery, uh, which I always enjoy seeing, and some great Pennsylvania Dutch style fractor art, uh, which is a real Pennsylvania, real Pennsylvania thing. I'm over here with the 18th century bookbinders, and uh, they have a variety of book products uh, for sale over here, some of which I think would be quite surprising to people today that these are actual texts from the 18th century. Well, I'm here with Dele Sayers. He's a colonial bookbinder. And uh, Dele, what have you got there? What I have is something that you know a lot of people don't realize that in the 18th century they didn't have rubber erasers, so they could still write with a pencil and erase. And this has a special coating that comes from the 16th century that it took me a while to perfect, but literally it comes with a, uh, a nail pencil, as they call it, in which you can write a message for yourself or someone else, and then when you're completely done with that message, just take a cloth, a little moisture, and the pencil comes right off. That's excellent. Kind of like an 18th century wet erase board. <laughs> <laughs> and what have you got here? These are all handmade? These uh, are all handbound books. I have all types of titles. Everything from cookery to military to uh, just all kinds of titles. Things that historians and people would enjoy reading. Well, I think it's very neat. Thanks a lot for talking hey, to thanks us. Thanks a lot. This is Ken Gehagen, a marvelous rifle builder. And I've known Ken for quite a while. And he always manages to surprise me, and he's got a piece that is really different, very interesting. Ken, would you tell us about this gun right here? This was a project that I did with Ian Fratt, and we had a plan to each build a gun, whatever type and style we wanted, and then give it to the other so that he could finish it. And the stipulation was that it had to be a painted finish just to do something different with it. Uh, this is a gun that I built based on a kind of a composite early French influenced collar. This is the one Ian built, uh, more of a Germanic type. And he painted this one with a, a Delft type finish. Uh, 
this one more Germanic finish. But it's some of the features on this particular gun is an early Dutch lock and it has a patch box that's a reflection of a section off of a original tobacco box. Oh wow. So the design is developed directly off of this piece as if it were damaged and recycled. So if you're to look on the inside of the box, it's a down release. There's a little catch, a uh, little spring on the door, a side opening box and a little roll spring for the uh, release. Well, that is beautiful. It has um, a couple other features. It has a trigger guard that's to look like a handmade, blacksmith-made trigger guard, but in this particular instance, it's just staked in the front. There's no front finial. And then it proceeds to go all the way down the length of the buttstock and actually bend around and, and is underneath the butt plate, which is just nailed on. So it's a little different, uh, something that could have been. I don't know that I've seen it on any particular gun, though. Um, another feature is the uh, side plate, which is interesting. It's a serpentine uh, New England-style side plate that a lot... A lot more interesting than a lot of them. It has a creature kind of eating another creature. Really interesting. And, hmm. um, a fellow at Fort Frederick was camped next to me and had the original gun that this is uh, taken from. So we worked off a picture of that one. So just a lot of simple designs worked into this and a wonderful, wonderful paint job. This has kind of a tobacco theme between the, the patch box <laughs> and the, the Deltaware tobacco jar too. So there's a lot of interesting features. Trade gun. That's a beautiful gun. Very different. Yeah, certainly different. Most of the uh, better-known builders in the Mid-Atlantic area show up for the show, and you can really see some of the finest examples of their work when you come here. So if you want to see some artistry in the long rifle culture, uh, the show is a great place to do it, and it's a, it's a good way to break up the winter. <laughs> when you get tired of looking at rifles, you can uh, look at some of the other great 18th century crafts on display here, like this great uh, exhibit of tinware, lanterns and candle holders and mugs and you name it. If it's made out of, if it's made out of tin, it's here. <laughs> and there are a good number of bag makers here as well, and you can pick up anything from a practical hunting bag to well, something not so practical. I mean, this this particular one's almost the size of a uh, of a sleeping bag. <laughs> And here's another look at some of the great bags that are here at the show. Uh, you can get everything from little bullet bags up to full-size hunting bags. And, uh, you know, this is, this is an area that I think has really been picking up in the last couple of years with much more authentic styles of bags coming out. And you can really see them here at the show. There's a real effort made to get some 18th century styles uh, in here, along with the typical 19th century styles that we usually see. So, well worth the trip. And in addition to John DeWald, there are lots of other horn makers here as well. So, you get a real opportunity to see what's out there in the marketplace. And hopefully to buy yourself a good horn if you need one. Now, Mitch Yates is uh, one of the best rifle makers here in the country, but... Lately, he has also branched out last few years into engraved trade silver, uh, and he is an excellent engraver, and his business in the, uh, in the silversmithing line has really picked up, but he still does gun building, and uh, I'm going to give you a better look at this blunderbuss he's working on right now. I'm here with my friend Mitch Yates, one of the best gun builders in the country. And he's working on something that is a little bit different for him. It's been a bit of a challenge, so why don't you tell us about it, Mitch? Well, this is a, a blunderbuss, probably about 1760, 1770. And this particular model has a flip-out bayonet. 
And uh, the way this works is, is you, you pull back on this, bayonet pops up, goes forward, and then it latches on the front. How about and that? When you want to close it around, you push that button there, and the bayonet folds back up again, and you push forward on that latch, and it holds it in place. Beautiful. Well, for several years now, Chris Lubach, who's, who's a friend of mine and a phenomenal gun maker, has been working on a project to bring this fully CNC machined lock to the marketplace. It's a Germanic style colonial lock, uh, rather large. It's fully CNC'd and it's beautiful. And if you're a gun builder and you're used to cast locks, this lock is going to be a revelation to you because a cast lock can take me several hours to polish. Uh, get that casting scale off of it and make it ready to inlet. This lock comes virtually ready to inlet. If you're not picky, you could put it in just as it is. If you're if you're a little bit picky, you might want to do a little bit of work on it, but you'll be done in no time. Uh, and it's gorgeous and it's a phenomenal sparker. So uh, get a hold of Chris if you're interested in a different lock to use because this one's great. Well, there's also a fair number of art available at the show. Uh, Lord Nelson's Gallery in Gettysburg, PA has a display, but so do a number of individual artists. Uh, and you can find something for almost any taste here. Now, personally, I bought a piece of art while I was here. In fact, it's the only purchase I made at the show because I have just about everything I need. But there was a print that really caught my eye from Robert Albrecht and um, I bought it and it's a way being framed right now so when it comes back home maybe I'll show it to you uh, and it will probably end up in one of my magazine articles so if you're looking for art you can find it here well Ron Luckenbill was here again this year I didn't see him last year so I was glad to see him back uh, Ron is the builder of the rifle that Leonardo DiCaprio used in The Revenant, uh, which was a Bucks County rifle that they ended up cutting down for the movie, much uh, <laughs> much to Ron's dismay. But uh, he was back again. He makes some beautiful long rifles. And if you wanted to have a copy of the rifle that uh, was used in The Revenant, he can certainly fix you up. Well, if you come to the show and you buy a new horn, you're probably also going to need a strap for it. And Chris Polizzi makes some of the finest horn straps around. And uh, Chris is at a number of shows. We'll catch her at Dixon's again this year. But she's an excellent strap maker. And if you get a horn, stop by and get a strap. You know, ultimately, there's too much at the show for me to even attempt to show it all to you. But if you'd like to see it all, then come on down next February to uh, the Country Cupboard Inn in Lewisburg, PA, and enjoy the show for yourself. I'd be happy to see you here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up. That's how we get uh, on more recommended videos on YouTube. So, thumbs up is a way to help your favorite uh, video producers out. And... If you are not already a subscriber, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel. We would really love to have you, and you can get notifications of the new videos before they go, not before, but as they come out. And uh, if you are a subscriber and you want to support the channel, you can do that on Patreon. And for those of you who do support us on Patreon, thank you very much. It uh, is really a major factor in being able to keep this channel going. So, I'll see you next time. Bye.